Welcome to Courageous by Design. This is the very first Obel Prize Forum, and it comes one day after the announcement of the inaugural Cornelia Han Obelander International Landscape Architecture Prize Laureate, the pioneering and iconoclastic Julie Bartman. We'll hear more about Julie from Obel Prize Jury Chair Dorothea Imbert immediately after lunch. Julie, like Cornelia before her, and the people you will hear from today, is fearless and courageous. She and her cohorts are also visionary, principled, inventive, resourceful, pioneering, and determined. They are leaders. They see solutions where most others only see problems. And the problems they're addressing are the most important, consequential, and dire we all face collectively. The reality of the climate crisis appears daily in the news, and more importantly, in our flooded homes and businesses. Cornelia Han Obelander, who the New York Times aptly called the Grand Dame of Landscape Architecture, was one of the first people to issue a clarion call to the landscape architecture profession to take a leading role in addressing the climate crisis. In our video oral history with Cornelia in 2008, she said, my contribution has also been to uplift the profession to new heights and to understand that the profession can't sit still, that there are new waves of happening in the world, such as understanding climate crisis, the scarcity of water, scarcity of land. The future for landscape architecture is immense. And if the landscape architects don't take the opportunity at this point, while our governments are waffling on climate change, if they don't learn this climate change inside out, namely, and I'm gonna to try to channel my best Cornelia in my delivery, stormwater management, limiting footprints, using plants that don't need much maintenance of water, if they don't seize this opportunity, then the landscape architects, again, are asleep under the ground like my classmates. <laughs> she concluded, and they need to learn to take risks, assume responsibility and do their research, and then they'll do okay. Cornelia was 88 at the time, feisty and full of fight and ready to lead the charge. In fact, she walked so fast during the videotaping that the camera operator had a hard time keeping up with her. Now on to today. The information sheet you received this morning provide you with the schedule of today's proceedings. Please note there are QR codes. You can scan the information for each of the speakers, their abstracts and additional materials. Before we launch into the day, I'd like to thank all of the speakers. They are professionals with cram schedules, demanding clients, eager students, and practices to run. That they all agree to participate is an honor. But as many of you know, this symposium has twice been postponed due to the novel coronavirus and each and every one of the participants today agreed twice to reschedule and honor their commitments to be with us today. Equally as patient and committed have been our sponsors. This event would not have been possible without the support of our lead sponsors, ABC Stone, which hosted a terrific reception last night at their showroom, not from, far from here on West 22nd Street, with Lapitec, Vermont Quarries, and Victor Stanley. During a time of roiling uncertainty, ABC Stone, Lapitec, Vermont Quarries, and Victor Stanley have been consistently supportive, and for that, we are truly grateful. I also want to thank the New York chapter of the American Society of Landscape Architects, who have been a partner in this endeavor. Today's symposium is about the climate crisis in the five boroughs of New York City. However, the issue is not just how a world-class city tackles a worldwide problem. It's also the case of who is doing the work. In New York City, that work is being done by women landscape architects. They are the leaders, the innovators, and the risk takers who are planning, designing, building, and advocating. So when someone says woman's work, think of the people in this room and their leadership in addressing a global crisis. They are the people donning the hard hats and directing the backhoes as well. By the way, that's Cornelia Obelander in the lower right-hand corner. Having seen her in action on a job site, where she's in charge and issuing orders, I suspect those guys around her are walking on eggshells. In closing, I want to dedicate this day to three courageous women, Cornelia Han Obelander, Julie Bargman, and Heather Morgan. 
You can see Heather in the lower left corner of the job site during her tenure at the Army Corps of Engineers. Heather could not be with us today because of health reasons, but she would have if her doctor had permitted it. In the face of astonishing adver adversity, Heather, like Cornelia and Julie, is feisty and full of fight and ready to lead the charge. So with that, let's start today's proceedings with Beth Meyer and a formidable panel, including Martha Schwartz, Kate Orff, and Lisa Switkin. Enjoy the day and thank you. <laughs> 